In this pre-introduction, the word narcissist is used as reference to all cluster B personality disorders, i.e. narcissistic, borderline, histrionic, and sociopathic. Are narcissistic people aware of their syndrome? The self-awareness of the narcissist is relative to his subjective definition of the term narcissism. Mention that he's narcissistic and he'll proudly agree. Mention that he's a manipulative freak and he'll deny it promptly. It appears that he assigns the word narcissism with positive qualities like prestige, high self-esteem and assertiveness rather than arrogance or craftiness. However conscious of his narcissistic traits, his mind backwards rationalizes these in a positive fashion. To you, he's a thief for stealing your savings. He didn't steal. In his eyes, he simply did justice by ripping away what didn't belong to the weakling. Quite absurd. That's how they reason, unfortunately. Along with this distorted self-concept, narcissists are also fully aware that people's perception of them can change after a while. They realize that they're only skilled at shaping short-lived relations, as people tend to distance themselves when their facade is shed deep into a relationship. Yet again, the blame is placed on others, not themselves, deluded that people run away not because the narcissist is unbearable, but for every person he meets is unable to stand his awesomeness. So they keep on meeting new people, jumping here and there with the misconception in mind that one day they're gonna meet some sort of a soulmate who's as perfect and reflective of their supreme, blinding presence. At last, the narcissist's positive self-perception remains static despite the changes that could occur to others' perception of him. A narcissistic personality is well equipped for making good first impressions. Other than that, they struggle to maintain a long-term bonding, unless the partner or the friend sees the narcissist only once in a while and therefore remains in the dark about his true self, a somewhat long-term distant relationship. If their perception of themselves and the world around them is completely flawed, should you be over-empathetic, appease them like dummies and let them walk all over you simply because they have a personality disorder? Absolutely not. These people surely are able to distinguish right from wrong. Just as they realize not to touch a stove when it is heating to avoid self-harm, so they should be able to realize and refrain from potential harmful actions toward others. In spite of this, they choose to do the wrong thing deliberately. The degree of this quote-unquote syndrome awareness may vary from one person to another. In any case, you have no obligation to be empathetic and enabling towards a self-aware or non-self-aware emotional vampire. EUPD is a personality disorder that encompasses two subtypes. The first, the impulsive type. The second one is the borderline, which is more severe, but both are equally debilitating. We'll be looking at cases from tolerable to psychotic, illustrating the whole spectrum. As you go through the character traits of this persona, try to recall someone you know who might correspond with them. And throughout this video, note that the pronouns he and she are going to be used interchangeably, as well as the terms borderline and emotionally unstable. Trait 1. Hypersensitive. Intolerant to criticism, real or perceived slights. Quick to feel victimized, especially when blamed, and prone to make up false accusations of disloyalty based on unfounded suspicion. In a group setting, if they miss the point of a joke, they'll pester you to further elaborate. Should you not do so, they'll get butthurt, assuming they have the joke held a hidden meaning meant to one-up on them. This may seem minor, but imagine how irritating it would be if repeated daily, especially when you know deep down that your intentions were good. This behavior may constrain others to tiptoe around this personality, to self-monitor or keep silent most of the time. But even your lack of words may trigger suspicion. There is no way around the hypersensitivity of the emotionally unstable. Should their friends go to the movies or to party without notice, the next day they would accuse them of a deliberate omission, seemingly intended to isolate the emotionally unstable to badmouth her. Behavior number two. Victims in search of an oppressor. This person is notorious for collecting grudges. He's always on the look for slight mistreatment, unintentional forgetfulness, which will be used as defense against any further blame, or may be exaggerated to create exciting drama. He or she is liable to bring up instances from the past of some faux pas you did emphasizing how much ill will driven you are. And they're often unforgiving and may have lengthy lists of things that conceivably were intended to harm them. 
What they need is of utmost priority. Careless of your feeling discomfort, they transgress your personal space or try and influence your decisions just to mine their wants from you in time. Self-reliance seems occasional. When they need you, it means they need you immediately and if left unserved, they wait long and bitter disputes. Have a childlike need to feel special. They either crave the spotlight like the narcissistic or yearn for your undivided attention and may seek to grasp it by several wicked maneuvers. For instance, the wife who propagates to her husband's colleagues or family that he is bad-mouthing them to create contention and divisiveness, garner his undivided attention in return. A quite subtle yet poisonous tactic. If you suspect someone you just met as emotionally unstable, it is best to avoid introducing them to your clique until further examination proves otherwise. I recall dating this girl for, for a couple days. On our first meeting, I had to meet up with my buddies beforehand, but made sure I had sufficient time for her. And so we met. A few minutes in the conversation, she questioned how was my day, irritated to hear that I met other people before joining her, bursted out loudly, was it really necessary to hang out with your friends before our date? Why don't you just dedicate a whole day for me, and only me? And I could tell by the earnest tone that she wasn't kidding. The underlying communication is she wanted undivided, unshared attention. If things had escalated to a relationship with this person, spending time with my family to her would be conceived as cheating. I personally do not gaze someone as emotionally unstable from one single symptom they've displayed, but the weird vibes persisted in subsequent meetings with this girl, which had evidently raised my suspicion. Behavior 2. Excessive Flattery on your primary encounter with such personality, you'll probably feel some sort of a high around them due to their relentless idealizing. They will shower you with praise in an infantile sort of way, exaggerating unrealistic qualities and blabbering about how perfect you are. That first date lasted less than 40 minutes, and soon after I had her text me a lengthy, dramatic paragraph on how magical and liberating she felt beside my presence. Beware, for you've been complimented day in and day out. Now they anticipate you act as they please, compensating their niceness for you by serving their needs. Because we humans have a strong tendency not to disappoint, it's unfortunate how many can fall for this maneuver. It's as though they're distributing free poison elixirs, take a sip and turn a slave. But let's say you did cater for them. Fail them in the slightest, their idol becomes the enemy. They'll overlook any good you did them in the past and aim only on that one trivial mistreatment. Behavior 3. Demanding without boundaries. This lad places heavy demand on your personal resources, turning a blind eye to boundaries or social norms. Key nuance here, the narcissistic will do so out of arrogant entitlement, the emotionally unstable out of desperate dependence. As a doctor, expect their bargain in without official notice, disregarding the people in line and insisting for an immediate treatment. If asked to calm down and schedule an appointment beforehand, an outburst of righteous indignation ensues. Another thing you'll notice are the frequent emails, calls or text messages, oblivious of your busyness with work or family. Recall, the market pattern is how swift they can shift from overt idealization to furious rage whenever rejected or asked to go by the rules. Behavior 4. Vandalism, blackmailing, sabotaging, stalking, if not, keep mentioning. Persons of extreme emotional instability will overlook laws as their mannerisms speak to outrageous behavior. If you're an ex-lover, Friend, anticipate their sending acrimonious texts, breaking into your workplace to argue about a past relationship, or inflicting damage to cars and personal property. This demeanor might be rooted in their inability to move on, which is intertwined with their having long lists of unforgivable grievances. Oftentimes, jealousy could drive them to sabotage your next date, telling them how much of a whore or asshole you are and that your potential partner should be on his guard around you. If you're still in contact as a lover or if this person is your parent, their common conduct would be to test your loyalty. You'll witness childish games like spending their pastime eavesdropping, surveilling, stalking, making sure you won't cheat or talk behind their back. Be watchful, for they might go as far as to install hidden cameras or softwares that fish for your online credentials. Lying is a core feature for some borderlines. 
One quite intriguing story by the author accounts for a woman who reported being sexually abused three times in a row in a city where rape proportions are minimal. The local department spent tons of money on investigative search, jailing innocent people as potential suspects, only to discover at last that it was all made up. At times when she felt needy, this woman would phone 911 or paramedics and feign a rape allegation, which would constrain the police to assign her an advocate and a detective, not to mention the relatives who'd leave their jobs and kids to rally up around her for weeks. All this for what? The borderline's yearning for everlasting attention. Apart from lying or feigning illnesses, to get their way, the emotionally unstable may have numerous manipulative methods under their belt. The most cunning that you need to be familiar with are suicide threats. Please engrave this in mind. Whether the suicide attempt is feigned or real, your first reaction is to tell the person that you're gonna call 911. Then do so without reluctance. You'll find that while you're dialing the number, they'll usually back away. But don't wait for them to do so. The second they seemingly gesture to or mention of suicide, call an ambulance promptly. Do not wait, do not hesitate. Self-harm attempts, feigned or real, should be always taken seriously. By reaching out to a professional, you will have conveyed to the unstable person that you have not allowed yourself to be manipulated, and by doing so, it's unlikely that they'll repeat the act for you have proven your ability to handle the situation. What you shouldn't do is cater to their needs or beg them in hope that they'll back away from the suicide attempt. They won't. Rule of thumb, what you tolerate is what you habituate, and especially with this type of people. Now unlike the narcissistic, setting strict boundaries and showing that you can deal with their behavior effectively tames the emotionally unstable personality. In fact, their demeanor will change towards you in particular, for you've proven to be more crafty than they are. Next time, they'll think twice before endeavoring such cheesy tricks on you. And so remember, manipulative acts you might encounter include lying, conniving, crying, flirting overtly, fuming, and suicidal gestures which should always be treated by calling a professional without a second thought. I had an emotionally unstable girlfriend at the age of 15. The experience was quite devastating, yet informative, especially as I see it today. This girl had traumatized me in so many ways, but the one thing I had vividly recalled while reading this book is the moment she began using my emotional attachment to her advantage. One day, she had threatened that I should go buy her drugs from a dangerous neighborhood or else she would end the relationship. At the time, I was young and naive, but now that I am conscious and can analyze the situation, I would have to admit, this person was freaking nuts for a 15 year old. Not only risking her health by turning to drugs, but exploiting my deepest feelings for her to coax me into what? Placing my life at stake in the ghetto to get her way. As mentioned, the level of chaos they could cause sits on a spectrum. Some are less destructive than others. In psychotic instances, the person, not having been provided with his needs through successful manipulation, will reach out to violence, sometimes ending in murderous crimes. Treat number 4. Irrational, all or nothing thinking. Behavior 1. Reacts emotionally rather than logically when stressed or critiqued. They cannot be reasoned with. Most of their reactions, decisions, are driven by irrationality and visceral compulsion. Self-contradiction is frequent, along with their need for long-lasting groundless arguments. Any perceived slight or constructive criticism would prompt a fuming eruption. Surprisingly, when there is nothing to pick up on, they would go to crazy lengths and start berating you for ordinary gestures, claiming how the way you breathe or walk imply defense. Often will you hear, chilling out isn't in my nature, that they can't help but be their shitty and knowingly argumentative selves. Should there be a debate between them and a friend in common or between their spouse, they will constrain you as their child or friend to side with their opinion or else you'd be perceived as an enemy. In regards to this, I previously mentioned how the merest disappointment towards you erases any memories of your past good deeds and narrows their vision on that one tiny error. At such critical moments, nuanced judgments cannot be entertained, either you're good or bad, with or against them, all or nothing thinking. 
Most borderlines have inflexible mentalities, unwilling to change courses of action or welcome novel, opposing ideas. As far as this goes, cult leaders who could provide a dogmatic set of beliefs that they could follow without questioning are compelling to the emotionally unstable. Especially charlatans who propagate beliefs that challenge the status quo, foster extreme or outrageous behavior, e.g. strange rituals, exhibitionism, etc. Even though the cult leader is clearly a psycho murderer, persons with this disorder would think he's sane and truthful, which make of them a naive prey for voluntary exploitation, self-harm or unthoughtful criminal acts. The borderline personality finds elation in joining these secret groups owing to the unconditional acceptance, sustained care and robust group bonding that they are unable to find in normal society. Sadly, in exchange for attention, they'd rather have a sort of mad guru harness their will. Treat 5. Impetuous, Impulsive, Sensation Seeking Behavior 1. Just make me feel something. Cause chronic emptiness governs their default state. They cannot withstand lack of stimulation, will risk anything to get some, to fill the void. To stimulate oneself, this person engages in reckless spending, substance abuse, unprotected intercourse, sexual solicitation, gambling, bulimia, shoplifting, and is fairly notorious for getting arrested on the regular. He won't hesitate to place his or your relationships, finances at stake to reap a mere dose of dopamine. She literally goes nuts if she's motionless, hunted by all kinds of agonies and suspicions. There has to be something going on at all times to serve as distraction. She longs for any kind of feeling, be it joyful, ongoing laughter or spiteful debates. Nevertheless, since negative vibes bring about more stimulation, she takes full advantage of her effortless skill at provoking arguments. She is constantly, and I mean constantly, on the look for the merest slight, for that's her food for emotion. Even though you haven't done anything, there has to be something, every single day, that that crazy could pick up on and argue about for days. It may seem irrational to you, but to the borderline, pure ecstasy is derived therefrom. Quote, a very pathologically sadistic need to injure, coupled with a masochistic need to partake in a cycle of acrimony and discord so that they feel something. Besides arguing, the borderline creates dramatic scenarios to water their emotional drop. Your emotionally unstable partner may flirt overtly with your friends, bang them even, and ensure to make these acts so blatant and in your face. They long for drama, and creating interpersonal conflict between you and your relatives is only one notch ahead to molding a wondrous film. The borderline lover may lure your brother or sister into having sex, argue that it was their fault, then beg you to stay cause they love you more than any. Let this sink in. They couldn't care less about the relationship. Their emotional needs met, that's all that matters. This is their primary goal from any type of bonding. The emotionally unstable personality is by nature notorious for intense relationships. Chaos is the only thing they have to offer. These pricks here about loyalty only in books and fairy tales. They could have convinced a dozen into a long-term commitment, deceiving each that they both share true love, all behind your back. They cannot withstand lack of attention, and so they're unreluctant to beautify their selfish need for a company into a false love story, making use of your genuine affection for them to fill the void. Nothing is a big deal when it comes to ridding themselves of tedium. Deliberate sexual exploitation, STDs, unwanted pregnancies are just another mere notch on the volume knob. Here I'd like to clarify that excessive flirting, cheating and frequent sexual exploits are more common in histrionic personality disorder than in borderlines. However, given that both disorders can often coexist, the latter characteristics could pertain for the borderline as well. We'll dive deeper into this in the comorbidity segment. At her worst level of instability, the borderline can become easily attracted to law-breaking criminals, mingle with junkies, overdose or get killed. 
Behavior 3. Chemical Dependence. She holds grudges, easily affected by criticism, is constantly suspicious of others, and continually plotting for revenge. Anything that could serve as distraction to stuff down this self-perpetuating cycle of unbearable spite, she will use it. Some BPD people can't think straight without having a shot every few minutes. I call this chemically dependent decision making. You may notice as well that she's gonna be always ready to try out any sort of substance cocktail with total obliviousness to the after effects. Picking at scraps, cutting or biting herself, banging her head against the wall or pressing lit cigarettes onto her skin. The person with this disorder would go to great length to trigger an emotion. Pleasure or pain ain't dissimilar, just make her feel something, anything, that's what matters. Summary of Trees and Behavioral Cues 1. Hypersensitive, intolerant to constructive criticism, real or perceived slights, deliberately misinterprets the meaning of jokes to prompt an argument, notorious for collecting grudges for future debates, victims in search of an oppressor, accuses you of being rude when you ask for an apology, turning the blame on you because you're seemingly making them feel bad about themselves by saying that they should be responsible for the havoc they have caused. Their needs are prior to your schedule, anticipate piles of calls, messages, unexpected visits, etc. Causes divisiveness between you and your peers through bad mouthing to acquire your undivided attention. Is really pissed off to hear you're unavailable. On a first date, they may praise you as the most wonderful person they have ever encountered, declare love even. This is their ultimatum to garner as many relationships, hence perpetual attention. And yes, most people often fall for it, for most of us cannot resist such ego flattery. The persons close to the borderline often regard a remarkable pattern, that of rapid shifts from idealization to scorning contempt, especially when they don't get their way. Extreme cases, their disregard for boundaries can reach acts of vandalism, sabotage, stalking, eavesdropping, and hacking to your computer searching for signs of disloyalty. Lying is one tool in the toolbox they use to get attention. Ready yourself for feigned illnesses, depressions, eliciting pity by narrating their fake or real abuse stories, and last but not least, making false allegations to the police that could reach even accusing you of molesting your own children. They enjoy the spotlight of being surrounded with lawyers, doctors, detectives, and will risk making up false dramatic accusations of injury, rape, crime, or what have you, simply to get their dose. Deceitful instead of apologetic. Say they cause you trouble, they'll bring up every false accuse on the book to brainwash you into believing that you were the wrong one for pointing out what you perceived as offensive. Most people end up yielding to the borderline's potent ability at flipping the script, deluding them that what he did, although abusive, was actually no big of a deal. Every time you make their trouble slip through, they'll keep turning up the notch of abuse till callous acts like physical beatings become the norm to you. To hinder this process, make sure you place strict boundaries on what you may or may not allow around yourself in terms of behavior. Second, anticipate exaggerated and overt flirtatiousness with you as a stranger or with your friends as a lover. Feigned or real suicide threats that should be handled of course by promptly calling 911. They may threaten of leaving you, extreme cases may threaten to kill you, blends water with fire, i.e. being over complimentary to cajole you and lure you back into abuse whenever they feel like they're losing you. Had they locked you down again, then they switch on to full abuse mode and the cycle continues. Flips truth into lies or mixes the former with the latter, throws tantrums, weeps, fakes sadness, lies, Welcome to the manipulation arsenal of the emotionally unstable. Their logical side is moldy, they're mainly emotional reasoners. Like he or she can be provided with all the evidence that they did hurt you in some way, but since their emotions govern their thinking, they may continue counter-arguing, despite having no proof to back it up. They just quote-unquote feel like they are right, zero rationality involved. Prone to make a big decisions under the influence of strong emotions or substances. 
either you're with them or against them, friend or foe. Although cunning, his irrationality and rigidity makes a gullible fool out of the borderline, can be easily seduced by cults, criminals and charlatans who preach out dogmatism and outrageous mannerisms. In exchange for attention from the cult, the emotionally unstable will unfortunately may be coaxed to self-harm, commit or be involved in crimes and even yield to willful exploitation. Unable to stand, lack of simulation or stillness, often cannot stop talking or arguing merely to evade the chronic emptiness they experience when things go silent. Recklessness that shows off in their excessive spending, drinking, binge eating, sexual exploits or solicitation, gambling and theft. Straightforward or subtle verbal abuse is usually used in the hope of causing you to react so that they bite back ten times harder and louder. Wouldn't hesitate to cheat or flirt with your friends or make false allegations against you. Finds tremendous amusement in such scenarios as they provide the borderline with raw sensations. Reason that the motives behind their seeking partners and friendships is only to gain narcissistic supply, i.e. intense emotions and lasting attention. A means to an end merely war in their eyes. More often than not, the BPD patients are also diagnosed with innumerable addictions like online chatting, alcohol, drugs, and so forth. And last but not least, induces physical harm to oneself to jolt out a feeling or to cope with daily challenges. The basic diagnostic criteria that most psychologists use is based on number. How many character traits the person should exhibit before we call them crazy. As an example, two treats tolerable, three moderate and more is lethal. One or two are not enough to judge but sufficient for you to turn alert and further investigate until a third symptom shows up. This metric is surely practical, however to a certain extent, for should we gauge not in terms of numerousness but frequency and degree of behavior, a single personality tweet per se can make a person extremely malicious. Example. Someone can score 0% on all 5 treats except of being cunningly manipulative at a 100%, which surely places him on the psychotic end. Another could score a moderate rate of 20% on all 5 treats, resulting in an overall score of 100 and he couldn't be less dangerous. The same metric can be applied to any of the below sub-treats as well, be creative with it. Now a key point to add. Sometimes certain treats disappear in the person, making room for others to appear nevertheless. For instance, the person could experience a period where he's manipulative per se, but turn only impulsive or only needy in other periods. In short, there could be a back and forth alternation between these treats without affecting the person's baseline level of dangerousness. Tolerable emotionally unstable people are the ones who are quite often friendly, non-irritating and may display certain traits but rarely, like once every two weeks or once a month. They would score very low if assessed by the first as well as the second criteria. At that level, we could argue whether the person is unstable at all. He might be merely negative from time to time, or he might be just having a bad day and that could have resulted in his sudden uncanny behavior. In either case, it's vital to get your guard up at the sight of any of the previously discussed behavioral quirks or character traits. Recall as well that dangerous ones could operate through a veneer and may go as far as to experience good days, weeks, even months, making them quite difficult to detect. Those are the ones who could quote unquote hold their shit together for longer periods of time. New acquaintances discern nothing, but the closest to them are the most tormented for they may explode only deep into a relationship. Psychologists call these high-functioning borderlines the ones that are really skilled at hiding their instability. The following impacts may be felt in numerous contexts, in the workplace, on a date, with family, etc. Sensation 1. Walking on eggshells. Their hypersensitivity constrains you to behave in an inauthentic fashion, e.g. monitoring what comes out of your mouth, compromising your needs, appeasing and cajoling them like children to avoid their wrath, and scheduling your day in a way to distance yourself. Another impact you may notice is a recurrent energetic drainage. Dealing with their monstrous presence is very exhaustive of your willpower. 
even when they're not around they're still roaring, haunted by anticipations of the next trick they're gonna spring on you. Sensation 2 derails you from your path. As he or she is always on your mind, you may start neglecting your ambitions. They leave you no room to care for yourself any longer. Your whole life circles around this person now. Guess who's gonna build them out of jail when they get in trouble? Obviously. But even though you're always the borderline savior in such cases, they will undoubtedly format any memories of it at the sight of a single mistreatment and bite back at you. An ungrateful burden, that's what they are. People also mention having been driven to hurt others or to take risks on behalf of the borderline. They literally drive you crazy. Irritability and impulsiveness you may develop. Someone greets you with a good morning and you may react negatively for you're no longer present, anxiously going about your day, dreading your next encounter with that devilish being. The closest to the emotionally unstable often deal with chronic stress, low self-esteem, sleep disorders and depression. In treat number two, we've discussed how she often alternates between demoralization and glorification. The second one couldn't be less debilitating. The borderline can go over the top with her shallow praise, allocating unrealistic qualities to you, pleasurably feeding into your ego. Stick around long enough and you might turn into a narcissist. Sensation 6. Emotional Contagion you're often positive and detest arguments, but find it frequent that you get triggered and you're that particular person. Realize then you're at the presence of a high conflict creature. You'll notice behaving in ways you have never behaved before, or feeling these weird negative vibes that you find difficult to put into words. You could dwell together for years, unbeknown of your partner's instability, or may go as far as to forgive and overlook their blatant abuse. Due to your ambivalent infatuation, keep on rationalizing that they're just quote-unquote a bit negative, unaware that the longer the relationship gets, the borderline's behavior begins to reflect itself in the victim's demeanor. And if you gaze long into an abyss, the abyss also gazes into you. You should have vivid memories of regular, callous beatings as a child of a borderline, often for no other reason than a sudden mood swing. Families usually witness harmful objects getting tossed in the air, broken plates and guns being fired in some instances. Emotional and stable males in particular are more liable for recurrent physical violence against their wives. Choking, punching or burning spouses are typical means for discharging their masochistic needs. This first segment was meant to plant in the viewer's psyche a mental image of what a borderline should look like. The character traits were detailed in a way that they stick to mind and ease the discernibility of such evil beings. In my upcoming sequel for this video, we'll be diving even deeper into the borderline personality, with the concept of comorbidity, the three phases of unhealthy relationships, red flags and much more, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Part 2 will be uploaded real soon. Thank you.